Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is very different, but also kind of similar to a video that I've done in the past, and that is a classic favorites video. But for today's theme, I wanted to go over my summer beauty aesthetic. I'm gonna share some things that I've been loving for the past, I'd say three to four months, and a lot of things are new, so I'm really excited to share them. But first of all, the overarching theme of my aesthetic has been warm tones or warm neutrals with splashes of rosy hues. I also have dainty florals in there as well as angelic details and it is sprinkled throughout all the things that I'll be sharing with you. So that is the overall aesthetic and I've had a lot of fun with it. So first off, let's get into hair. As you can see, my hair is lighter. I've had black hair for years now and this is my first time going a bit lighter. It's kind of like this warm brown, kind of coppery, but not too bright. And I knew from the beginning I didn't want my hair too bright because I like a very natural look. It feels very carefree and that's what I like. My hair is usually pulled back like this, kind of like half up, half down. I don't like having my hair all over the place. It just makes me feel um, too glamorous. It's not really my vibe and I feel like having it pulled back like this or even in a ponytail, which I have been doing. I wear my hair like that for work. This ponytail that I've been doing is loose. It doesn't look too sporty. It does feel a bit more elevated as far as um, ponytail goes. I do have hair accessories that I like to play with, but my hair is pretty much like this all the time because it is hot. It did get up to 90 degrees here in upstate New York, and that's not fun for me. So I really played around with having my hair down yet up, carefree. I definitely was into oils for the ends of my hair, for restyling, it was very unfussy. Is that a word? I'm not sure. And as far as my bangs, I am growing them out as of now, but I do like having them. And for me, I always part my hair down the side now. I don't do middle part. Those days are over. So for makeup, I was pretty much foundation free all summer. I have been for Almost a year, I hardly wear foundation. I feel like I've worn it maybe two, three times over the past year, and that is, I feel like, a privilege, and I can't believe I'm even saying this because I struggled with acne for a long time, and I never thought that my skin would ever get to the stage, so I'm really excited about that. And for the eyes, I was really into, again, rosy hues, pinks, and even reds, which I don't really associate with summer. So the three eyeshadow palettes I have here are the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette and this color story is just my vibe. Warm tones, some purples in there. And then this palette, the Urban Decay Born to Run, I've had for a while and this whole bottom row also has some purples. I really don't go into these colors at all. The warm tones, rusty colors, that's what I love. I have loved those for a long time. And the surprise palette that I really got into this year was the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette. This is a pastel palette, but it also doesn't have to be, and that's why I got this palette last year. So these colors, Rage Quit and Game Over, also level up this one in the center. I use on my lower lash line. I have it on today. And I actually saw a TikTok video of this girl putting red under her eyes and it was like a, it looks kind of sexy hack. And I was like, oh, let's, let's try that. Let's just go overboard. And I did it and I loved it. It also kind of takes the focus off of my under eye circles, which aren't that bad. It's not horrible, but adding color under there just kind of makes it look undone. Like I'm not trying too hard. Like I'm just carefree. And that's really what I like to be in the summer because I hate the heat. To ground my eyes, I use brown eyeliner just on the waterline or on the lash line. For eyelashes, I kept them uncurled and pulled towards my temples. So I would just concentrate the mascara on the outer half and then kind of work my way in when there's not too much product on the brush, sometimes not even putting mascara on my inner eyelashes, just kind of pulling them outwards and um, sometimes just going for it, um, just full on layering a lot of mascara and those were for days that I wasn't wearing any eyeshadow. So yeah, two kind of completely different looks. Both kind of remind me of anime, like going for big doll lashes and then 
kind of wisping them so you look um, swept away. I don't know. I don't know what to say. For the cheeks, I really got into the rosy hues like I'm wearing right now. Today I'm wearing Milani's Cream Blush. Love this color. It's 110 Nude Kiss and this color is just perfect, I think. It's not too bright. It kind of goes with a lot of looks that I do. Moving into the bronzer category, I actually have this product. It's by Bare Minerals. It's a bronzer, so it's blush and a bronzer. And I was messing around with this, putting it everywhere. It does give like a rosy hue, the color that I got. I'll put it on the screen because I don't know where it is. So I really like that. I would wear it by itself and on top of blush. And I think it's a fun product if you're into shimmery things. I think it's really pretty on the eyes as well. So that is that for the combo. And then for bronzer, I got into the NARS Laguna. This was a birthday gift from Sephora. And for years, because of my complexion, I never thought that I would like this product, but it actually works for my skin tone. I think the reason why I like it is because it's not very cool toned and this is a really good shade for the crease. Like if I'm not doing any eyeshadow, it looks beautiful. Just swept into the crease. I got really into these two lip glosses. One I'm wearing right now. These are the Tower 28 Lip Jellies. I have the shades Cashew and Coconut. Um, this pink one I first got and then I ended up getting cashew because it has more of a brown tone So if you haven't tried these glosses, they feel so good very fuss-free again Like they last for a while. They're not sticky and the price is pretty good And I just love the packaging very minimal applicator is nice. Just love these now We're going to move on to nails, which is really exciting. I actually found a color that is the perfect I'd say like nude for my nails. I'm wearing it right now. I actually painted over my gel nails because my nails were not not going with my beauty aesthetic. It was a wild card. So I painted over them and as you can see, it kind of looks like it would be a nice nude lipstick. And this is the shade Dulce de Leche by OPI. And this is so gorgeous. I feel like this will look good on so many skin tones. If you're darker than me, lighter than me, I'm just Google some photos. It's just beautiful. It's not too peachy. It's not too pink. It's not too brown. Like it's just in the middle. Once it starts to wear off or grow out, it's not really obvious. Again, very fuss free. I really got into gel nails and this was not even my doing. I was given a set of like 18 nail polishes from someone that I see at work and they are the Gelin gel polish collection and they're from Amazon. These three shades were my go-to's. So this first one is a light peach, and then the next shade up is definitely more of a brown. And then going up from that even darker is this kind of terracotta color. So these three colors um, definitely look great. They go with everything. I feel like these are nice lip colors. That's really um, a theme that I've been finding. I love things that look like uh, lipstick shades. The next realm of beauty that I don't really talk about too often is fragrance, and that's because I have a difficult time with fragrances. I don't really like purchasing them because they cost a lot of money, and I actually have purchased a fragrance in the past, like a couple years ago, and all of a sudden, a year later, I could not wear it. I would just get sick, and that was Burberry Her. So after that, I was kind of scared to purchase fragrances. Um, but I did find one thanks to a friend. I was at her house and she had ordered these Pacifica fragrances. This one is Dream Moon. I love patchouli. So the notes are pink rose, patchouli, and sandalwood. And all together they create a very sweet and creamy and gourmand like quality to it. And gourmand was something that I didn't really know much about until I started looking into fragrances a couple days ago because I want to kind of retire this for the summer and get something for the autumn because I now associate this with summer and being kind of bright and sweet and fresh, but it's not a fresh scent, if you know what I mean. Like it's not at all that. This is also a dupe for Ariana Grande's Cloud, but like I said, I don't like spending a lot of money on fragrances and this is around $22, so love that. So back to the gourmand, if you don't know what that is, it's a very edible scent like vanilla, almond, chocolate, 
and that's definitely a theme with scents that I like. I do want to try something different, but there is one fragrance that I am hoping to purchase, which I've actually had before. So I'll share that when I do my autumn aesthetic. Very excited about that because it's my favorite season. Now we're moving on to things that I am really excited about. I mean, I'm excited throughout this whole video, but like very excited about because it's stuff that I don't really share too often. I got really into small, understated details, I'd say, because I like a lot of quirky little details. For instance, these hair clips. They're flowers, fake pearls, and it came in a pack of three. Found them at Target on clearance for like $5. And I used to stay away from pearls, but these were in a shape. It also reminds me of Sailor Moon when she is in her almost final form, Super S, and she has these feather hair clips. And it just gives me again, like an angelic, like celestial type of vibe. And the next thing that is also very like celestial is this necklace. This was a gift from my husband. And the main pendant is a sun with an opal in it. And then there are tiny little moons and stars. And I just layered it with these necklaces that I've had forever. And they are real gold, so I don't take them off um, unless I'm diffusing my hair. They may get too hot or this snake one may get too hot. So again, like fuss free. I love having gold jewelry that I don't take off. And this is a first for me. And for my earrings, I did pierce my second hole. And the first one, I've been wearing these so much just a small gold hoop. I used to avoid gold hoops, um, but this actually, you know, has a clasp in the back, so it's not open. My hair doesn't get caught. A mask doesn't get caught. This first accessory is a pair of sunglasses, and they are from Target. They were around $20. They're polarized. I don't know if they still have them, but these are like the same color as my skin, my hair. They are just non-threatening to any look that I put together and offer a lot of coverage. They're comfortable. They don't get caught in my hair, which is a deal, a big deal with curly hair. So no resters. My other pair are Ray-Bans with resters. So for a fuss-free life, not worrying about the sunglasses, this was the pair. And even the lenses are very warm. So underneath a very cloudy overcast sky, very bright. It just makes everything look warm, kind of like autumn. And it was just such a nice sensory, um, sensory experience, I should say. For shoes all summer, I was very repetitive with my shoe choice because my feet were hurting a lot. I was very busy at work. I'm on my feet a lot. So my Adidas sleek sneakers were a go-to of mine with little gold details. Still love those sneakers, highly recommend them. And I actually found these ones by Cole Haan at TJ Maxx. It's kind of the same color as my skin, which I feel like isn't easy to find. So I really appreciated this color and also the amount of support it has over the top of the foot three little gold studs and this thick strap across the front and it's very comfortable cole Haan is not the trendiest brand out there it's very i feel like adult that's just what i call it yeah very comfy i can't wear sandals that um, are very thin they need to have some type of support and I think the braided detail also goes with kind of the whole angelic theme that I was talking about earlier because when I think of like Greek gods um, and like togas, it's usually paired with like a gladiator type sandal, which was very popular years ago, but I had to retire my gladiator sandals because I felt so out of style. Um, I hardly wore them last year and I was so excited to find kind of an in-between. I have to give an honorable mention to this shirt because I almost wore it in this video, but decided not to. So this shirt is by Wilfred Free. It has the tassels in the front, the tie front with the bows. Again, very cute. Um, it gives a very young vibe and this trend, I guess I should call it, um, I really tried not to get into because I felt like, I don't know, I felt like, an older person that was like trying to participate in young trends but i just got over it and honestly i don't look my age like people think that i'm in my early 20s which is still bizarre um so i decided to just try it out and i think the fact that i got this in this color really helped me embrace pink i want to touch on the color pink really quick because this has been quite a journey for me i 
would avoid pink for years because it was just too, I'd say, feminine. And for a long time, my aesthetic was kind of dark and I don't want to say grungy, but leaning towards that. I definitely went towards the dark side and for the past couple years, I've been trying to embrace more white, light colors. The tone of this shirt is exactly what I like. It's not too bright, it's not exactly muted, it's not pastel. Pastels are not the greatest colors on me, so yeah, I would love more pink things in this color. Just, uh, just saying. Trying to uh, not go back to Aritzia and see what else they have in that color. Going back to my overarching theme of dainty florals, so florals are something that I've always loved and of course every spring, summer they come back and I've definitely appreciated dark florals but when it comes to lighter florals this um, was definitely the year of loving it a lot, loving it on white particularly. So this tank top that I'm actually wearing, it is a part of a two-piece set I found at TJ Maxx and this has a little frilly detail on the tank and there is a cardigan, a long sleeve cardigan that I haven't really worn because it's been so hot. But this print, along with another dress I'm going to talk about later, um, these prints have blue and blue is a color that I've avoided for a long time. It's just not my favorite. I also think it has to do with the fact that I wore blue to Catholic school up until eighth grade and it's just not the most flattering color on me. These two floral items both have blue florals in them, but they also have warm tones like pinks and yellows and of course green. So I was happy that I was able to appreciate blue in an understated and dainty way, just sprinkled throughout these patterns. And moving on to the dress that I wore to a wedding back in May, this dress was a very big deal. I loved it so much. It actually reminds me of my home decor and particularly in our last place. So our couch was a light blue, I regretted it, so I decided to use both cool and warm tones and it became really cohesive. I love this whole new realm of florals that I found on top of white. This past year, I definitely tried to incorporate more breathable fabrics like linens or linen blends. This shirt is one example. I found this at Zara and it has these really fun frilly details. I love kind of frills or gatherings in clothes. I think it adds like an extra charm, an extra roundness. I feel like I'm cosplaying, but it's understated. Like I could be, but also not if I paired it with the right things. And with the right things means dainty accessories and things that are understated. So from the outside, it looks like a regular shirt, but to me, paired with my little accessories and maybe a fun bag and little lace-up details. This outfit in particular, I'll put it right here, it's so fun. Um, I wore that to a seafood place and it just made me feel like I was a part of the theme, like I was a pirate at the seafood place. But it was all for myself and I think that is the fun part of like getting clothes that you resonate with that are still like stylish and like fresh and fun. I have a skirt also in this kind of fabric and it's a floral pattern, um, very summery, but I think it'll transition well into the autumn. The last realm of clothing and accessories are my bags and I have two complete opposites, which I love. I love that I can show you guys two things that um, really excite me and in different ways. So the first bag is this orange one. It looks very bright. It's not as bright as it is on camera. It's by Coach and I actually got this at Goodwill for $25 and it's a top handle but also has a long strap. This I believe is a part of the Coach signature collection and Coach is actually the first like mid-range bag brand that I fell in love with. I love this collection because it has the horse and buggy love that also the gold on here isn't as bright it's kind of antiqued it looks vintage but it's not and of course this little strap is helpful it has a flap and the inside is this like brass gold color it's so beautiful so the pockets are just very fuss free like a little pocket for my phone holds a lot of stuff and of course a very convenient little snap magnetic closure. This was such a find. Never thought that I would own an orange purse, but I love orange. So when I found this, I was just 
God, so obsessed. This is my main casual bag that I use. And the last item that has been a part of my beauty aesthetic is this bag. This is my first like more expensive bag. I purchased it last year. It is the Senrev Aria belt bag. Almost forgot the name. I have the gold chain that goes with it as well as of course the regular strap. But this chestnut brown is the perfect color and this is actually what sparked my interest in brown in general and I got these sandals because they kind of match but not really like it's going to be very hard to find things that match exactly but this was the closest thing that I could find without, you know, looking forever. So this bag I wore to the wedding and if I were going out like on a date with my husband, I would wear this and it's not an everyday bag. It's a little bit fussy because of the way it closes, but it's very pretty. This is the strap inside and I love that it's small. It goes with many things and with a simple outfit, this bag definitely will dress up a look. I don't wear it often enough because I am more carefree. That is the one thing that I will say about this bag. Um, I think now that I have like Apple Pay on my watch, I will be more likely to wear this bag because getting out my wallet and all that stuff at a register is just so convenient. Trying to like close this bag, you have stuff in it, it's just not very fun. But I just wanted to mention it because it is something that is special to me and I am really excited that I have it and it's like the one thing that I know I can go to if I want to look like kind of extra fancy but still understated because Senrev in particular is a luxurious brand. It's, it hasn't been around for that long and the reason why I love Senrev goes back to my whole aesthetic which is understated, dainty, kind of structured in a way um, but still um, kind of carefree because it's small so I can't have too many things with me so I think it adds to what I'm going for so that is it for my summer the aesthetic I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thought that it was insightful um, I know it's the end of summer but I want to continue to do these this was my first one and it was inspired by a youtuber that I been watching for I think a year now. Her name is Elisa. It is in a way a favorites video, which I've done before, but the way that she, you know, put together these themes, I really wanted to do that just so everything felt connected because that really is what an aesthetic is. Like everything is connected in a way and I think it's really fun. Like either to look back on and see what you've collected to see if they all relate to each other or if you're going to move forward and you plan on purchasing things and you want everything to go together. So that's why I think it's so helpful. I'll actually leave a link to her video down below because it is quite different from mine and I think it's really fun. And doing this kind of video was very long form video. Um, it was very different. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe if you are new and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.